In the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. We're observing a pen Independence Day at St. Bart's this morning as we come together to celebrate almost 250 years as a nation. Independence Day offers us a chance to reflect on our history, where we've been, where we are now, and where we're going. As a country founded on the principles of liberty, justice, and freedom. Independence Day is also a holiday that, at least for me, brings up feelings of nostalgia for celebrations of years past as we gather with family and friends for picnics and barbecues, watch fireworks. Now, we Americans are big on nostalgia. Depending on who you ask, the country hit peak nostalgia moments in 2011, 2015, 2017, and 2022. So, in other words, just about every year. And according to a recent survey, in case you were wondering, Gen Z is the most nostalgic generation. 15% of Gen Zers would rather think about the past than the future. And really, who can blame them? Yearning for those halcyon days of the 1980s and 1990s. <laughs> Nostalgia of, for the past is a big part of our present. Now, the term nostalgia was first introduced in the 17th century to describe a condition experienced by Swiss mercenaries who left their Alpine homes to fight in foreign lands. Their symptoms included persistent thinking of home, bouts of weeping, anxiety, fever, fainting, and insomnia. Now, there were several theories about what caused these nostalgia symptoms. Some believed it was due to a vibration of animal spirits. Others thought it was caused by a change in atmospheric pressure. And one doctor proposed that the high incidence of nostalgia among the Swiss was due to the unremitting clanging of cowbells in the Alps, which damaged the eardrum and the brain. Well, whatever the cause, nostalgia remained classified as a psychological disorder well into the 20th century. And it became associated with feelings of loss, grief, and homesickness. But over time, the word came to take on the meaning we associate with it today, a sentimental longing for the past, usually for a time or place with happy personal associations. Now, nostalgia can be a wonderful thing, strengthening our social bonds and helping us to feel better about ourselves. But it's important to note that nostalgic feelings are almost universally positive. They almost never include unhappiness, frustration, despair, hate, shame, or abuse. And some theorists take a more negative view that nostalgia involves the wounding realization that some desirable aspect of one's past is irredeemably lost. So we should take care with our nostalgia for the past and put it in its proper perspective. It's important that we not let our rose-colored nostalgic feelings get tangled up with our actual history. 
that our desire to feel safe and comfortable, that we're not blind to uncomfortable truths. It's important that we remember and recognize our entire history, our trials and tribulations, as well as our triumphs. Now, there are those who would have us deny or ignore the less palatable chapters of our national story, who want to erase or undermine the identities of people whose race, gender identity, or sexual orientation are different from theirs. There are those who want to ban books and limit education, turning back the clock to a time that was simpler and more comfortable for some of us, but was cruel, painful, unjust, dangerous, and even deadly for others of us. It's a paradox in a country founded on principles of liberty and justice that we have never fully extended liberty and justice to all people. And still, we struggle to do that in our own time. Just this week, we've seen that ongoing struggle play out in Supreme Court decisions that derail the progress that has been made in race-based affirmative action and LGBTQ plus rights, as if race, gender, and sexual orientation are not now and never have been factors in discriminatory practices. But lest we think that we are the only people who have a hard time remembering and reckoning with our past, fear not. We've heard this story before, and it happens to be right here in our reading from Deuteronomy this morning. As the Israelites are about to cross the River Jordan and enter the Promised Land, we hear the voice of Moses reminding the Israelites of who they are, what God's love looks like, and warning them not to forget how to live as God's people. In the chapters just before today's reading, Moses recounts their history to them, their history of being tested during their 40 years in the wilderness. And it ain't pretty. Remember how you provoked God, he asked them? How you built idols? how you strayed from the path. Remember how when God provided manna for you to eat, you complained that there wasn't any meat. Remember how you were so miserable that you actually wanted to go back to Egypt just because the food was better there. Remember how you couldn't see beyond yourselves and your own desires long enough to remember that the place with the free food was also the place that enslaved you. Moses tells them, you all need to remember that you aren't so perfectly virtuous. But guess what? God is with you anyway. And that's why, as God's people, you have to do for other people what God has done for you. You care for the poor and marginalized because God cares for the poor and marginalized. You love the stranger because God loves the stranger. And you, of all people, know what being a stranger feels like and you know how God cared for you. God's commandment is simple, but it's really hard to live into it. So these people need to stay vigilant. 
in reminding them of their past, Moses isn't trying to tear his people down. He's trying to get them to see themselves as they are. Imperfect children of God who constantly need to be reminded of who they are and whose they are and how they are to live. And that's what God is asking of us, too, on Independence Day and on every day, all year long, to remember, to reflect, and to return to God, to remember who we are and where we've come from, to reflect on the mistakes we've made in the past and learn from them so that the lessons of the past become lessons for the future, and to always, always, always return to God. We're called to do this not just for ourselves as individuals, but as a community, as a people, as a nation. So what's the point of all this? Why should we put ourselves through this painful and uncomfortable work? What purpose does all this remembering and reflecting serve other than to dredge up conflicts and open old wounds? Why can't we just enjoy our 4th of July, have a few hot dogs, and bask in the nostalgia of yesteryear? Well, because we as Americans have been given a great privilege, the privilege of living in a democracy. And with great privilege comes great responsibility. So we do this for the love of our country. We do this for the sake of our neighbors. And we do it because the story of God's people has shown us time and time again that confronting our truth is healing. It's redemptive. It is an act of love. And it will set you free. Amen.